English Year 8, Term 3B, Creative Writing. Welcome to Week 3, Lesson 1, in which we're now going to transition to narrative writing. So the last couple of weeks on descriptive writing, those same skills will be transferable into the story writing that we're going to begin today. Now the retrieval quiz for this lesson can be accessed as always if you're on a PowerPoint by clicking on the button that says Knowledge Retrieval Sheet at the bottom, uh, by um, typing in the link there if you are on a downloaded video or on some kind of printout, uh, and if you're on YouTube, just click the link below in the description. There will be five questions as always, and each of the answers of those will be on your retrieval sheet. However, you will get instant feedback once you complete the quiz. Okay, so we're moving on now from the last two weeks we focused on descriptive writing, and the next two weeks we're going to focus on narrative writing. That's story writing. Now, there's very little difference, actually, between descriptive writing and narrative writing. The only main difference is that in a narrative, there's more of a storyline, but really you're going to be using those same skills. So those skills are very much transferable. Now, what we're learning to do today is to explain effective features of an engaging narrative opening. So we need to say what is uh, effective and um, hooking for us as a reader that makes us want to continue to read that story. What has the writer done in that first sentence or paragraph? Then, to aspire, we're going to explore those effective features of an engaging narrative opening. So the difference between explaining and exploring is perhaps that we're going to think of more than one or two reasons. We're going to explore the whole different range of ideas that we can think of. So for this starter task, we're going to rate some opening paragraphs. So an opening to a novel will appear on the screen. And what I want you to do for each of these, and there'll be three of these, I want you to draw a line like you've got the bottom of the screen there. On the left, put ineffective, and on the right, put effective. When you've read through the opening, I want you to plot an X for how effective you think that opening is. If you think it's absolutely brilliant and perfect, put your X right on the right hand side. Equally, if you think it's the worst thing you've ever read, put it on the left. And then when you've done that, label the X, so draw a line off it and label it with a reason why. Why do you think this is the most incredible answer you've ever read? Why do you think that this could be improved? And for your challenge, because we're exploring and we talked about exploring, meaning more than one reason, your challenge is to label your X with more than one reason. So we'll go through each of these three together. OK, so opening A. So in the margin of your notebook, you could write A, draw a line like this at the bottom of the screen and we'll plot our X. So it was a dark and stormy night. Alexa was worried because she'd lost the football match and she really wanted to win the match. What was she going to do? Suddenly, her friend Olivia appeared in her bedroom window. Fancy a game, just the two of us, she asked. Alexa rushed out of the window and into the garden. And what a match it was. So that's the opening to a, a novel. I want you to plot your X. Is it effective, ineffective and why? Pause the recording to do that. And when you finish, press play and we'll go over what you've got. OK, so you should now have your X plotted. Um, Again, this depends on the context, doesn't it? I mean, to me, this feels like a very basic, almost like a children's story. Now, if it was for a five-year-old, maybe it would be a bit better. But really, my X is going right down the left-hand side there. In fact, I'm going all the way to ineffective. There's so many things bad about this. It was a dark and stormy night. That's a really generic way to start a story. And it's, it doesn't have any description in it like we've been learning over the last two weeks. Dark and stormy. It's a little bit of pathetic fallacy or an attempt but we rush through the story really quickly, don't we? And what a match it was, no detail. So the main problem with this is it's lacking in detail and it's just too basic. Okay, so opening B, again, draw your line and plot your X. So we've got ominous clouds of darkness dominated the skyline as the sun covered itself with shame. Like incessant bullets, the rain attacked the hills below, battling for dominance over the fragile landscape. Chaos reigned. Okay. Pause the recording, plot your X and press play when you're finished. So this one obviously is a lot better, isn't it? We've got a lot more detail and description. We've got some of that sophisticated vocabulary, like incessant that we've been learning, dominated. We've even got some transferable phrases. Now you might say, well, hang on, this sounds more like the description we were writing last week. Well, that's actually a good thing because we want to be using that same skill of pathetic fallacy, uh, of detail in a description, and sophisticated vocabulary. So for me, I'd have my X, I think, pretty much close to effective. I wouldn't have it all the way, 
because even though it's good and it's setting the tone and the scene, um, I think I wanted something a bit more specific. All we've got here really is that it's raining, haven't we? Now, I might want to have something a bit more intriguing for me, maybe maybe an object or a character, but I'm certainly going to say this is definitely an effective answer. So see our final opening. Again, draw a line and plot your X. Don't forget to label it with at least one, if not two reasons why. The door slammed. It hadn't been opened for 20 years. A fraying mess of splinters bolted together with steel chains and it had just slammed. Kyle was certain of it, and now the memories of what lay behind it lurked in his mind like the monsters of the past. It was time to get out of bed, creep down to the cellar, and look for himself. So pause the recording, plot your X, and press play when you finish. Okay, so for me, this is the best opening. I'd be having that right up to effective. Now, it doesn't have any pathetic fallacy in it, and as much detail as be, but it is doing this thing of withholding information, which is how you hook a reader, and that's on your retrieval sheet. So the narrative hook there is the door slammed, and I'm asking, oh, why did the door slam? It hadn't been open for 20 years, and I am again wondering, what's behind that door, why? So I'm already intrigued, far more than I am in B, and definitely more than A. We do have some detail, fraying mess of splinters bolted together with steel chains, I like that, and I also like the repetition of slammed again. Again, reinforcing my curiosity. We've got Kyle introduced, but we don't know anything about him yet. So what's really effective about this is the fact that we don't get detail. We get certain detail, like detail on the door, but I don't know why things are happening. And as a reader, that's really intriguing. So I'd be putting that right at effective. But again, it's your judgment. As long as you can support that with your own ideas, you're absolutely fine. Okay, so I'm now going to show you four different openings to real novels, um, popular novels. So these are examples of what a good one looks like. And what I want you to do is for each of the openings that we read, complete tasks A to D. Those tasks will be the same for each opening. So you can be answering the same questions. So you can be putting number one down your margin and then A, B, C and D. And then the same for two, three and four. Your challenge is to create a vocabulary bank so like we talked about last week great writers are magpies and they steal that great quote from t.s Eliot last week steal stuff steal some great vocabulary that you read or even better some great phrases that you read borrow them and make them your own okay so this first opening opening one is from a novel by Stephen King called It. Now you may have seen the film. I know I certainly haven't and wouldn't dare. Um, but this is very, very similar to the film, actually. It's a very, um, very good adaptation. So we'll read it through together, and then I want you to answer tasks A, B, C, and D and pause the recording when you're finished. So the terror, which would not end for another 28 years, if it ever did end, began so far as I know or can tell with a boat made from a sheet of newspaper floating down a gutter swollen with rain. The boat bobbed, listed, righted itself again, dived bravely through the treacherous whirlpools, and continued on its way down Witcham Street towards the traffic light which marked the intersection of Witcham and Jackson. So, task A, I want you to note down words and phrases that make this effective. So any keywords, um, key sentences, key phrases that you think, that's intriguing, just write those down in A. B, I want you to write down four to five adjectives to describe the overall mood. What is King trying to create in terms of the atmosphere here? C, I want you to create a list of criteria that this opening uses. So what three things make it good? And D, one or two ways it could be improved if you can think of one. Now, I'm, I'm not saying we're trying to improve Stephen King. He's a great writer, but there might be something missing. And remember, this is only a section of his opening. There might be something he does later. So give yourself five minutes to answer those four questions. Pause the recording and press play when you're finished. Right, so task A. Note down words and phrases that make this effective. I mean, I think the first one straight away, the terror. The fact that we start with the word terror immediately establishes for me this horror and sense of fear. I know what I'm in for, and I'm already intrigued. Treacherous was another one I picked out. Again, what a weird thing to call a whirlpool. Treacherous, like a traitor, like the whirlpool is betraying him. That's it really intrigued me, because I'm wondering, well, why on earth, or how on earth, could a whirlpool be treacherous? Four to five adjectives to describe the mood. I'd have dark, I'd have depressing, I'd have horrific, um, I'd have intriguing. C, a list of criteria. Well, 
many different things. One thing that the others did, or rather that opening C did for us previously, is it withholds information. We don't know what's happening and we want to know what's happening. So that's one. It's got a little bit of alliteration, the boat bobbed, uh, which again creates this kind of um, eerie feel to it. Uh, and I think we've also got in here some rather complex sentences, haven't we? Look how long those sentences are. That first sentence, that runs all the way to Rain. That second sentence runs all the way to Jackson. In fact, that whole paragraph is two sentences long. So I think those long and elongated complex sentences creates a very kind of long feel, a very slow feel, and therefore a tense feel. So that's another thing. Uh, third thing I think you're going to have in there uh, is the imagery of horror. You know, we've got terror, we've got treacherous, we've got swollen, the gutter swollen with rain. That could even be a metaphor for disease, you know, like the, if you know the story, the clown that comes later. Finally, how could it be improved? Um, I think maybe introduction of a character would be quite nice, you know, so we find that out. he actually does that later on. So if you had that brilliant, um, something else that could have been done, I think, as well as having these long sentences, maybe end with a nice short sentence to kind of mix up the sentences as well as you might notice that the two sentences both begin with the so king could follow our criteria couldn't he and put a simile start in or something like that so that's opening one so opening two is from harry potter the first book the philosopher's stone and this is the opening so this is how jk rowling chose to open her uh, saga and we'll answer the same questions as we did for Stephen King's It. So Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large moustache. So answer those four questions over the next five minutes, Press play when you finish and we'll go over some potential ideas. Okay, so task A, words or phrases that make it effective. I, I like the thank you very much because it gives me an initial impression of these characters that they are distant, they're cold, but they're also very proud. So that phrase for me, um, there's some other strange, like strange and mysterious. Um, again, it's given me a little hint as to what this story is going to be about. Maybe as well, I could have picked out I mean, it sounds like an odd one, which made drills. The reason I picked that out is because it makes him sound very boring, a very dull character. And straight away, I know that if we're starting off dull, something fantastical is going to happen, which obviously it does. Adjectives to describe the mood for task B. Uh, I'd have kind of, I would actually put dull and dreary, and I think that's done on purpose. Um, but also uh, mysterious, uh, intriguing, um, maybe uh, I could have... Uh, confusing as well because obviously we've got the mix of this very boring character with the strange and mysterious foreshadowing in there a list of criteria that it uses i think it uses quite uh, it uses a bit of um uh, kind of not quite slang but colloquial language thank you very much so it's using the language of the character we've got alliteration with big beefy man um, and we do, do have a bit of a detailed description of mr dursley so we can imagine him in our minds Finally, how could this be improved? Well, for me, I think, don't get me wrong, I love J.K. Rowling. I went to school with her. Big, beefy man, very large moustache. I think she could have done better with her vocabulary there. If you wrote big, beefy man, I think I'd be crossing that out. And I'd be saying, come on, can you think of a better word than big? Same, very large. We, I, but I, if I, to be fair to her, I think she's doing that deliberately. I think she's deliberately using that childlike language to emphasise the childishness of this character. But maybe I'm being generous there with Joanne. So you should have those four answers written out. So this next opening is from a novel called Glass Castle. Uh, I think it's soon to be a movie. Um, and so let's look at this opening and answer the same questions. I was sitting in a taxi wondering if I'd overdressed for the evening when I looked out the window and saw Mum rooting through a dumpster. It was just after dark. A blustery March wind whipped the steam coming out of the manholes and people hurried along the sidewalks with their collars turned up. I was stuck in traffic two blocks from the party where I was heading. So five minutes, pause the recording, answer those four questions, and then press play when you're finished. Okay, so first of all, words and phrases that I would be picking out from here. Uh, I would be picking out blustery. I think there's initially there's some pathetic fallacy, maybe to do some kind of chaos, because if you think about blustery, it's windy, things are picking up. Um, words like dark 
rooting, again, rooting through a dumpster suggests desperation of that character. Adjectives to describe the mood. I'd put um, luxurious to begin with. She's sitting in a taxi. She's overdressed. But then also you've got poverty, haven't you? So you've got this mixture, a bit like when we were looking at Blood Brothers. You've got the the, the lavishness of the character versus the um, poverty of the mother. Uh, criteria, I think what's good is this is in the first person. I was sitting in a taxi. So immediately I begin to empathize with the character. It's always a good thing to do. Other things it does uh, is it withholds information. The initial uh, opening where um, her mum's rooting through a dumpster, I'm asking questions like, why is her mum rooting through a dumpster? So that's interesting. Um, and ways this could have been improved. Well, uh, I suppose we could have had a bit more pathetic fallacy. We do have some, don't we? It's dark. Uh, the, the winds whipping up the steam come out the manholes. So we do have some, but maybe it could have been a bit more detailed. Uh, and again, maybe... Uh, we could be having, I mean, there's, there's, there is a good variety of sentences actually, um, maybe vocabulary could have been improved as well. You know, we don't have any, we have words like dark, we have words like overdressed, uh, hurried, could have been a bit more in terms of adjectives, but I'm sure that's all deliberate as all writers do. Okay, our final opening here uh, is from a novel called The Silent Patient, uh, which is a, a horror novel. Uh, so I don't suggest you read it uh, unless you like that sort of thing. Uh, and so same questions, same time, same amount of time. So Alicia Berenson was 33 years old when she killed her husband. They'd been married for seven years. They were both artists. Alicia was a painter and Gabriel was a well-known fashion photographer. All I can offer is my opinion for what it's worth. And to me, Alicia was a kind of genius. Apart from her technical skills, her paintings have an uncanny ability to grab your attention by the throat almost and hold it in a vice-like grip. So five minutes, answer those questions, and then press play once you've finished. So words and phrases I take out of here. Um, obviously, we've got killed. So that first sentence, straight away, I'm thinking, okay, we're right into the action here. We know there's been a murder. Um, but other things, vice-like, I like that, you know, like a vice that you might use in uh, when you're doing your woodwork or design technology, something that's really got such a, a violent grip. And again, that might be a bit of foreshadowing there as to what's going to happen later on. Adjectives to describe the mood. Um, I would obviously have violent. Um, I would have aggressive. I would have mysterious. Um, horror could be brought into this as well. And criteria. There's a lot of good things in this. Um, I like the use of... Um, sentence types we've got short and long sentences they were both artists but then we've got that final sentence quite long by the throat almost as a subordinate clause so that's effective um we also have withholding information obviously in that first sentence um as well as kind of detail about the character which would be um an, a good thing to do for any writer and ways it could be improved well I suppose we've gone, you know, Alicia was 33 years old. They've been married for seven years. I would say it's a little bit too informative and not descriptive enough. It's telling me things rather than showing me things. Telling me how old she is. Tell me how long they've been married for. Telling me she's a painter. Why not, instead of doing all that, just have her painting a picture slowly uh, and talk about, you know, her past and that kind of thing. That would be better. The detail would be better. But I'm not going to criticize a, a writer. There's a lot of really effective things in this as well. So now that you've seen some effective openings and some ineffective ones, we're going to use that criteria that we've developed to write your own engaging opening for the following task. So you're going to write a short story about a time you were scared. Now, you don't have to write the full short story. What I'm looking for is the opening. So I want you to spend the next 10 minutes writing an opening paragraph about a time you were scared. Now, remember, it doesn't have to be you yourself. It could be, but you could equally be a character. You could make up somebody a bit like perhaps the last uh, bit we read where we had Alicia Berenson killing her husband. You could have um, the story from It where the boy was running in the rain. So make it up. And we've got some... Um, Images on the screen there just to help you get started. We've got a spider there. Is it a time you saw one? Is it a time where one escaped? Uh, we've got a, a dark forest, maybe a time you got lost there. 
a, a house fire, perhaps uh, uh, you, when you saw a hand reaching through the letterbox. Make it up and make it interesting. And don't forget to use the key phrases that we've learned from our descriptive writing. All that stuff you've learned can be used here. So ominous clouds of darkness and chaos reigns, and personification, all those key things can be brought in as well. So give yourself, like I say, 10 minutes, pause the recording, write out the opening to your story and then press play when you finish. Okay, well done on all your hard work on that opening of your story. I'm hoping you're proud of what you've written. I want you now to write a list of criteria for what a good one looks like. So think back to the four examples we read. You've already kind of done this for task um, C. Collect all that together, collate it, and put it together into uh, a criteria list, a bit like what we've got on the screen there. Uh, when you've done that, I want you to red, amber, green, how far you've met each of those. So if, for example, you had on there using pathetic fallacy, brilliant. Green, if you've done that. Sophisticated vocabulary might be another. Think back to the things we discussed over the last few examples. I want you to, as a challenge, use your RAG ratings to set your targets for the week. So anything that you've got there, you think, well, I didn't do that. JK Rowling did that and I didn't manage to do it this time. That's your target for the next session. So make sure that you've got your list of criteria. You've red, amber, greened it. Red meaning you don't know how to do it and green meaning you're secure. And finally, one to two targets that you're going to try and meet over the next couple of sessions. Well done on all your hard work through this session.